Hey everybody, this is Dr. Lingdon with a video about sort of the state of the union of pediatricians and how we're feeling these days. So if you are friends with any pediatricians, you may wanna reach out and encourage them a bit. And I'll explain this. You may have heard, and I try to stay out of politics, that there has been a nomination made for the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services of these here United States. And that exact thing is what has struck fear, concern, worry, into the hearts and minds of pediatricians across the land. Now, you may not know us very well yet. It's not so much that we're worried about our Diet Cokes and Coke Zero and, ooh, Dr. Pepper Zero. Okay, maybe that's a little bit of it, but not really. No, 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 I'm just joking. What we're actually concerned about is that this nominee, RFK Jr., has proven himself to be opposed to science and data and evidence and life-saving effective vaccines and has promoted not only misinformation, but outright disinformation. And the difference is that when someone is spreading something they know to be untrue, that has been proven over and over and over again to be untrue, that's not just misinformation, that is disinformation. They're spreading falsehoods intentionally. And that's what he's continued to do. I do not have time in this video to get into all the details, but I'd be happy to do so. If any congressmen are watching, <laughs> they're not. But if they were, I am happy to come testify before Congress and share my actual life story. Anybody out there could just Google what happened in the island of Samoa when he spread disinformation. The MMR vaccination rate got down to like 37%, which is uh, light years away from the 95% herd immunity that's required to prevent a breakout. And sure enough, there was a huge breakout of measles on that island and almost 80 people died, most of them being children under five years of age, which is what happens when there are measles outbreaks. The children pass away, unfortunately. And some people have said that we pediatricians promoting vaccines are just spreading fear. No, we're uh, just spreading history and science because if you look back in history before vaccines were developed to help prevent these epidemics and uh, deaths by these exact diseases we can prevent now, there were so many infants and children who passed away before they had to now that we have the vaccines. I am not the oldest pediatrician in the world, but I'm certainly not the youngest. I'm somewhere in the middle. This coming May will make 30 years since I graduated and became a physician and a pediatrician. So I have had some experience, and I can even remember when I was in residency training in the 90s that there were many of my attendings who remained terrified of epiglottitis. Well, I never had to see a case of epiglottitis. It's a bacterial infection of the epiglottis caused by Haemophilus influenza B. Because by the time I was becoming a physician, there was already a vaccination against Haemophilus influenza B. And how incredible that all those children could be saved and all those nightmarish emergency department visits with an, a stat trip with anesthesia and ENT managing the airway that couldn't even be intubated through because the epiglottis was so swollen that they'd have to have a trach. And it was terrifying because the more upset you made them or the more scared they were, the more difficulty they had breathing and they could just die. And it was horrible, horrible. Uh, now, I have seen some uh, vaccine-preventable illnesses because even within my lifetime or my career lifetime, there have been new vaccines introduced that have saved so many children. One of those cases is uh, the meningococcal vaccine. It started out, uh, the one we used was, uh, well, now we're, are, we're using Menactra, now Menquad Fee, they're different brand names, but it protects against uh, different strains of meningococcal bacteria. And when I was a second year resident working in the pediatric intensive care unit on Christmas Eve, no less. The only two siblings of the family came in receiving CPR and we continued CPR on Christmas Eve on the only children in the family, a 14 and a 16 year old, one girl, one boy, until they both passed away after doing active chest compressions and every level of resuscitation physically possible for three solid hours. We had every co-team in this large university hospital medical center working and trading and rotating off. The EMS workers stayed to help. It was an amazing, beautiful group effort that was sadly unsuccessful. And so you can understand why now we don't want to shout and we don't want to scream and, and we don't want to get defensive against parents who are nervous about vaccines. We just want to tell you out of love and compassion and concern for your child that we could now prevent those gruesome Christmas Eve deaths when your children follow the routine vaccine schedule. And there's a reason it's scheduled the way it is 
also based on the child's ability to create antibodies at different ages and so many different levels of science. So when we as pediatricians who care desperately about the health and well-being of children hear that somebody could be in charge of a medical group, health and human services, who actively destroys public confidence in vaccines, we are mortified. Angry, maybe, mostly worried. I would say I'm more concerned. I wanna make my outrage known. I want to share some love and compassion and science and data and evidence with someone who maybe just doesn't understand. We're not trying to be, as we say in the South, we're not trying to be ugly. We just wanna teach. We wanna help and we wanna protect the children and their health. I am happy to discuss this in a civil way with folks and I am not even trying to get extra views by being con controversial in any way. I just want you guys to know why we pediatricians are nervous. We could start to see diseases that we haven't seen before because I trained in the 90s. I've never seen diphtheria. I've heard of a case of tetanus, but I didn't take care of that particular patient. I have seen pertussis. That's why it's so important for moms to have Tdap, pregnant moms, so they don't expose their baby to pertussis before the baby can start getting their own vaccines. I have seen some scary things, but I have never seen some of the diseases like polio. I've never seen an actual case of polio. Terrifying, guys. That stuff was terrifying. I don't want to see that again. It would be a strange new world. It would be a dystopian world. We don't want that. We want to protect our children, care about children, and I would love to have civil discourse around this, but please, I plan to call some folks tomorrow to make sure that he does not get confirmed. Thanks for listening and caring about children.